So fellas, Into the Light is upon us. And with it, we have the newest game mode, Onslaught, which has been a pretty fun game mode overall. And this is a wave-based horde mode, which I gotta say, guys, especially on Legend difficulty, this game mode really pushes you to the test. Today, guys, we're gonna be going over a guide on how to get started with Into the Light, how to unlock the Legend version of Onslaught, how to unlock weapons, attune weapons, target loot farm things, curated roles, and then, of course, go over some of my recommendations when it comes to progressing through Onslaught, which, by the way, offers a ton of flexibility. For instance, right before dealing with the bosses at every 10th wave, fellas, you can round. And look, having the ability to top off your heavy ammo, your special, and your subclass is incredible. But the other side of things is you have the ability to swap your entire class completely. Meaning, if you're rocking an ad-clearing build, you're not stuck with that. Matter of fact, you can change over to your DPS class before in that boss room. So again, some tricks of the trade that we'll be going over. Now to start things off, guys, you'll have a cutscene when you load up into the game. It'll get you on board, which by the way, everything is extremely hype right now for good reason. But essentially right after that, you'll load into the Hall of Champions. And this is what features all those different Easter eggs. Essentially, this is the tower storage. But upon pushing through all of this, you'll meet up with Shax and then a door to the hall will open. Now one of Shax's red jacks will now guide you through the hall to the inn where we will now be able to talk with Shax. Now Shax will have a big wall of text with some lore about us defending the last city and then after that we then get a seven step quest called feats of bravery now step one requires us to be power level 1810 now don't fret if you're not up to the pinnacle cap because you can literally look to the left of shacks and there is a gift of the thunder gods and this will give you gear to infuse not only does it give you gear it also gives you exotics for titans you get your yeet exotic curious of the fallen stars for my hunters you get liar's handshake and for my warlocks you get getaway artists by the way guys this is completely free so if you're like a new light player you get this stuff for free man and you get at level gear. This is amazing. Now, step two of the quest is to defend the last city in Onslaught, which will task us with completing the playlist version, which contains only 10 waves. Now, before heading off to Onslaught, you can grab other bounties from Shaxx and Arsite 9940, who's right next to him, who has weekly bounties. And there's actually three tiers for these bounties. The first tier provides 100 reputation, the second tier, 200 reputation, and the third tier, 400 reputation. And they vary in terms of difficulty, but they also provide XP plus, and a Brave Ingram when completed. You can only pick up one of those, so choose whichever one that you want to go after first. Now, within the Into the Light node on the Director, you'll see two options for Onslaught. The left node is the Matchmate Playlist Activity. This is where you're going to be matched with other players. The caveat here is that the activity ends at Wave 10, so you're only getting rewards once per instance. Now, to the right is our other node. This is also Matchmade, despite it not saying that it's Matchmade, and it goes all the way up to Wave 50. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is a much bigger time commitment. We're talking like 45 minutes to an hour, but there's a lot more chances at rewards. But keep in mind, there will be an increase in overall difficulty as you have more waves to get through and more modifiers. For example, this version of Onslaught has escalating difficulty, and this is where power level is fixed at 1600 and starts at zero below opponents. But every 10 waves, your power decreases by four. So essentially, guys, enemies get tougher the further you progress. On top of that, at the start of wave 31, you have delayed extinguish as a modifier, meaning you have longer respawn timers, and if your entire team goes down, you return to orbit. Now, also within this node, you can choose which map you want to run Onslaught on. And we have three options. We've got Midtown, Moth Yards, which is present in the Cosmodrome, and Vostok. Now, as far as like which map is the best, I actually prefer Midtown. It's not as open, and it's easy to consolidate enemies there. At the same time, I really enjoyed both Moth Yards and Vostok. What I will say about the bigger maps, especially things like Vostok, where you're holding like high ground and stuff, you can rock reindeer loadouts. So depending on the map you choose, guys, this could greatly affect the build that you bring in there. Now, within this same node, you also have legend difficulty to choose. This is fixed at 1810 power, and you have extinguished active right from the start. Now, this features a unique weekly boss at wave 50, which this week, that boss is the Siege Hook Ogre. Now, as far as I know, guys, it's just a giant ogre. Mechanically, I didn't really see anything crazy here. I just teed off on him with Leviathan's Breath. Now, your power will start 10 below opponents and will drop five levels every 10 levels. So keep that in mind, guys. As you get deeper and deeper into this horde mode, things get progressively hard. Now again, after killing a boss every 10 waves, you get a chest. But on the legend version, you get two chests. So it's essentially double the rewards compared to the standard version. Now both versions of Onslaught also have all champion types. So you need to make sure your team is equipped to deal with those champions, whether it's leaning into your subclasses. Again, things like Jolt, Stuns Overload Champions. 
Suspend stuns unstoppable champions. Radiant pierces barrier champions. And there's a lot of ways to really lean into this. Now we're gonna talk about how Onslaught works. No matter which version of Onslaught you choose, the way the activity plays out is pretty much the same. This is a three player wave based horde mode that has you defending an ADU. This is your advanced defense unit. Your goal is to fight off approaching fallen and hive enemies wave after wave. Now in order to defend the ADU, you need to make sure enemies don't stand in its zone and also don't shoot it. Literally, both of these things will hurt the ADU. And if your ADU goes out, you lose. And it can happen very quickly. Like a wave of cursed thralls can wipe your ADU. Now, if your ADU loses health, you can regenerate it with batteries that drop from high health targets. You pick these up and you throw them towards the ADU. Similar like in Black Armory with the Forge mechanic. Now, they will magnetize to the ADU, but I will say, at least for myself, I found better success literally throwing, at least in the bigger areas, throwing the battery straight up in the air, like arc it as high as you can, and then it will magnetize the ADU. Sometimes when I try to throw it directly at it, it like hits the wall or hits something and it has trouble magnetizing, which will require me to go up to it, pick it up and throw it again. Now, if your ADU already has full health, when you throw the battery at it, you'll instead get a duration of triple scrap. This is the activity currency within Onslaught. By the way, just a quick note, if you're in your super and you pick up a battery, you will lose your super. Now, scrap is mainly gained from eliminating enemies and it is used to purchase and upgrade defenses for a limited time at the beginning of every set, that being every 10 waves. Now, don't be concerned about getting those other upgrades though, because after waves three and wave six of each set, you can also upgrade and purchase those defenses. Now, the amount of scrap you make as a team also goes to everyone individually. So you aren't sharing a single pool of scrap. You could have 10,000 and your teammate could have 500. Now when starting Onslaught, you're given 2,000 scrap. So you can go ahead and start buying defenses right out the gate. So for example, you're able to spend scrap before wave one even begins. And then again, after wave three, and then again, after wave six, then in the next set, you'll be able to spend scrap before wave 11 begins. Then after 13, 16, so on and so forth. Now the defenses you're able to purchase includes decoys, turrets, and tripwires each with various scrap costs. These defenses do what you would expect though. Decoys will pull enemy aggro, which by the way, work incredibly well against tormentors, but also just for dragon aggro for enemies on like a flank or something, if you're trying to prioritize a certain lane. Then you have turrets, which of course shoot enemies. And then tripwires will damage enemies that walk through them. Now enemies can and will destroy these defenses if attacked enough. So in the process of defending your ADU, you also wanna be defending your defenses. Now, if something is destroyed, it'll need to be purchased again. And you lose whatever upgrades you had on that defense. Now, speaking of upgrades, each of these defenses can be upgraded two times. One upgrade gives the defense a purple glow. So we'll call this the legendary upgrade. And the second upgrade changes that glow to yellow. We'll call this the exotic upgrade. Now, each upgrade will also cost an escalating amount of scrap. And let me just say those upgrades are pretty costly. But at the same time, those upgrades are noticeable guys like base upgrade to exotic upgrade on a turret it is substantially tankier and more lethal. And you can physically see the changes with each of these upgrades. For instance, the decoys literally change. It starts off with like a sweeper bot, then it upgrades to a red jack, and then literally upgrades to Shaxx himself, which is pretty awesome. What's better than seven inches of Shaxx? Seven of them. Now you're able to coordinate with your team as to what defenses you want to purchase or upgrade. And this is where communication is extremely important. For instance, if you have 4,000 scrap, but your teammate has 2,000 scrap, it would probably be better for them to purchase the base version of the turret, and then you spend the 4,000 to upgrade it. And you gotta be openly communicating about this pretty quickly because you have a finite amount of time to get these upgrades bought. And if you don't get them done in time, that's it. You'll have to wait for when that next wave rolls around to make any more purchases. Now, as you progress through the waves, you'll get bonus challenges that will appear on the left side of your screen. And these vary from destroying splinters in the air to speed challenges that require you to complete the wave in a set amount of time or collecting relics that drop from enemies. There's also things like securing capture points, but there's multiple challenges that when you complete them, this will reward you an ammo box, which will be next to the ADU. This will also give you bonus scrap, a trophy of bravery token, and Shaq's reputation. So it's definitely worth doing, but at the same time, don't completely abandon the ADU. Definitely communicate with your team so that at least one of you is still defending the ADU while the others go do that bonus objective. Now in the sixth wave of every set, a portal will open up, which when you go through will teleport you to a pyramid ship. This will always be near the ADU. Now within this area, you'll need to defeat the witnesses forces. You'll continue to push through and then defeat these spark holders. And they'll have an icon above their name. But upon defeating these spark holders, this will 
spawn a spark that you would then take and dunk all the way at the end of this room. Then there's a couple ways you can do this. You can obviously just run in there, kill all the ads. Hope the boss doesn't kill you, which by the way, has an immunity shield and has stasis powers that can instantly freeze you and kill you. Kind of tough. This is where invis is literally broken though. If you have an invis hunter on your team, they can literally just pick that up, carry it all the way to the end, dunk it, and GG's. When that spark is dunked, it kills all the ads and the boss. Now when that happens, you'll then head back through another portal to then continue the rest of the waves for onslaughts. Now there's also augments that sometimes appear during waves. These are different from bonus challenges and they will appear directly below the wave number. Now these add objectives that must be completed in order to finish the wave. On legend difficulty, these are very important. Now, some objectives have timers and if they're not completed in time, your whole team dies. Now lastly, there is a secret encounter that can randomly appear after a full set of waves. So after waves 10, waves 20, 30, etc., there is a wave encounter called heat wave. This is where multiple tormentors will spawn. Now I personally did not get this to happen for me, but from what I've heard, you can get up to 10 tormentors spawn on you throughout this wave, which is pretty wild. Now, each Tormentor you kill, though, will grant you a trophy of bravery. A good comparison here, though, is to the extra round you can randomly get after you kill the Dares of Eternity boss. But keep in mind, guys, it's random and it's rare. But Tormentors are definitely something that can end your run very quickly. And I highly advise having a precision-based weapon to deal with those Tormentors. For myself personally, Leviathan's Breath with the Catalyst was doing wonders. Because not only was it doing a tremendous amount of damage to Tormentors, but it would also stun lock the Tormentors. There was a moment there where the Tormentor was trying to push up to take on our ADU, and I was pushing the Tormentor back with every shot of my Leviathan's Breath. So even though I love weapons like rockets, you know, originally we were using things like Dragon's Breath, Gallahorn, I was using like my one-two punch, Strand Shotgun combo, which has always been really good. Against Tormentors, they kind of suck, and you need things to deal with the Tormentors. So things like Celestial Nighthawk, Linears are also really good, Leviathan's Breath was phenomenal for me, and even if you bring some Someone that's rocking divinity that too can work against tormentors now before we move on to bosses and rewards i do want to talk about some tricks of the trade things that really made our runs a lot easier number one those heavy ammo crates you definitely want to loot those but you want to let your teammates know when you loot them because the moment you pick it up there is a time and if your teammates don't loot that heavy ammo crates before that timer runs out they will get no ammo number two because every 10th wave you're going to be able to rally i would highly suggest not picking up all the heavy ammo and special ammo on the ground before heading through the portal to deal with the boss. Instead, leave that ammo on the ground so that when you kill the boss and you teleport back, you can just go pick up that ammo. No need to waste all of that good ammo that's laying on the ground when you have a rally flag that you'll be able to rally. Now, like we said earlier, you can have an ad clear base build pretty much at all times while doing onslaught. But on that 10th wave, when you teleport to the boss, you can have a loadout already saved and you can swap to it. And this can be your DPS loadout. For instance, Les was rocking Fallen Sunstar and Dead of Kindness in an ARC subclass. And he was getting a ton of kills. However, when he tried to bring that build into the boss room, we were getting shredded. So what he changed over to was Well of Radiance so we could tank out the damage and do damage to the boss with a damage buff. Originally, I was rocking Stasis, which was great for locking down ads and for defending the ADU as it literally puts up a physical barrier. But when I would do damage to the boss, I would swap to my Pyro Gale build with Leviathan's Breath. And again, because you have the ability to rally, you can swap between these different builds and then after killing the boss you can literally swap right back over and if you left all your heavy ammo and your special ammo back on the ground wherever you were just playing at you can run back to those locations and pick up all your ammo now the last other tip and suggestion i'm going to make this is in regards to upgrades fellas you do not have to spend every bit of your scrap matter of fact for the first 10 15 waves you can avoid spending scrap and i kind of wait like i hold my scrap and my upgrades pretty much start with turrets because at least my turrets can defend themselves but as we get deep deeper and deeper into the waves. I continually keep upgrading those turrets and then I move to the other various upgrades, whether it's the trip wires and the decoys, but I tend to put a big focus on getting those turrets fully upgraded because when they're fully amped, they help a ton and they also tank a fair amount of damage. Now keep in mind, after every 10 waves and killing a boss, normally you will move to another location, but sometimes you don't. Like I've literally come out and I have stayed at the exact same location, which is huge because if you upgraded all your turrets in that same location, when you come out, you can literally take advantage of all those upgrades grades without having to move to another location that may not have anything purchased. But keep in mind, normally you will be moving around the map. So definitely communicate with your team on who's keeping what amount of scrap so that at least you can get some purchases and perhaps some upgrades to those different defenses. Now this takes us to the bosses and rewards. 
Again, after every 10th wave, you will board the pyramid ship to take on a boss. Now these bosses mechanically aren't that crazy. One is like killing a spark holder enemy who will drop a spark and if you dug it into the rift, this will deal massive chunk damage to the boss. Another is standing in these darkness pools, which will allow you to kill shielded enemies, which once killed, allows you to deal extra damage to the boss. Another is capturing these points, which will spawn reinforcement turrets to help you shoot at the boss. Now, personally, guys, we did the same exact thing every single time on Legend. We rolled in there, we dropped a Well of Radiance, we dropped a Tether, which FX was our Hunter, rocking Tether, Norpheus Rig, which is phenomenal in this game mode. But he would do that, and then we would just tee off with Leviathan's Breath, Sleeper, whatever weapons dealing high precision damage, and then I would pretty much shoot out as much as I could shoot out, and then right as the Well was ending, I would pop my Super, which was Pyrogale, and normally it would be another damage to get the kill. But guys, that's literally what we did every single run. But yes, you may have to adhere to some of these mechanics and these boss rooms. Keep in mind, reinforcements are spawning all over the place and they can overwhelm you pretty fast, which is why an Orpheus Rig Tether is so clutch here. It's literally just place it right there in the room. All the damage we're doing to the bosses is passing on to the ads, which is fantastic. Now at the end of every boss wave, you will get a chest that will spawn and this will randomly drop a weapon from the Brave Arsenal. And as you progress, you can get further rewards such as trophies of bravery, enhancement core, and like wave 50 will give you ascendant alloys matter of fact at wave 50 on legend when you beat it you get so many rewards my postmaster was slammed again this is taking a page out of the coil the coil is known for being one of the most rewarding activities bungie has ever given us and onslaught here is no different and what's funny upon beating wave 50 you have a hollow shacks here congratulating you pumping you up man so it's definitely worth getting to wave 50. Now back to the main quest that you're doing. I know we really just got off the beaten path here, but after you complete your first match of Onslaught, this will progress you to step three of the quest and it will ask you to return to Lord Shax. He'll give you a trophy of bravery tokens and ask you to spend them at the brave chest beside him in the Hall of Champions. Now, after collecting your weapon, you return to Shax again and you will progress to step six of the quest, which tasks you to add Elsie's rifle to your brave arsenal by completing the corresponding quest, Stranger Danger. Now, these weapon quests can be acquired from r 9940, who, by the way, stands right next to Shax. Now, a lot of them are pretty straightforward. The only one being somewhat different is actually Elsie's rifle, which requires you to complete one of the following objectives. The Fika Bands with precision damage using pulse rifles anywhere in the system with bonus progress granted in Onslaught, or the Fika Bands and Vanguard Ops playlist activities using pulse rifles, bonus progress granted for higher difficulty nightfalls. Now keep in mind guys, it's or. Originally I thought it was and, no, it's either or. Now completing this quest will grant you a special edition curated role of Elsie's rifle, as well as plus 200 Shaq's reputation. Now I would just recommend just playing Onslaught for this guys. It's pretty easy to do to get these kills for Elsie's rifle. Considering most of us want to play the new activity anyways, which is the whole point to enter the light, I would just do that. Now, once the quest is completed, you return to the Hall of Champions and you'll get a message at the bottom of your screen telling you that you've unlocked this attunement. Now, you may only attune one weapon at a time. To attune a weapon, you interact with its corresponding hollow shacks in the Hall of Champions. Now, what is attunement? Attunement essentially grants you an increased chance of that specific weapon dropping inside of Onslaught, as well as the brave chest that's right next to Shax. Now Chris Proctor said in an interview that it's about a 50% increase. I will say though, it's still pretty much up to RNG. So if you're not getting those drops, keep in mind RNG be fickle. Now after doing that, you can return to Shax who will give that curated special edition of Elsie's rifle. This role will have full bore, accurized rounds, rewind rounds, adrenaline junkie, and a handling mass work. And that's it guys. That is the intro quest for Into the Light. Keep in mind the curated roles are about a 70 to 80% god roll. By no means are they the god god roll, which we will be reviewing much of going into this week. Now, upon completing that quest, you can also pick up the rest of the quests to grant yourself those curated versions. And it's important that you complete these quests, guys, because upon completing them, you will then unlock the ability to attune those weapons. See, guys, you cannot attune any of these weapons until you've done those quests. Now, keep in mind, these shiny versions of these weapons are not the same as these curated versions. The shiny versions are very rare. Matter of fact, I got maybe like two, three shinies while playing Onslaught. And let me just say shiny versions of these weapons seem to be completely random. Like I just randomly got one after killing an ad. Now the reason why the shiny versions of these weapons are so unique is because they have double traits and they also look incredibly cool. Now the double traits means you have more opportunities for this to be a god roll. And in some cases, a god god roll. For instance, Ed's Transit, many people are wanting Envious Assassin in that third column, but also Cat 
Masquerade points for you to swap off to. This essentially means that you can overload your magazine with Envious Assassin and then proceed to swap your traits over to Cascade points while still maintaining that overfilled magazine. Now again, the shiny versions of these weapons will have the ability to have both of their traits in either column be enhanceable in the final shape. And this is the first weapon type to have multiple enhanced traits on the same weapon, which is pretty incredible. So keep in mind, guys, shinies is the most desirable loot out of everything here. But again, in order to get more opportunities for those drops, you need to get attunement. In order to get attunement, you need to finish the quests for each one of these weapons. Now I'm going to go over the requirements for each one of these. Recluse requires you to rapidly defeat combatants using submachine guns anywhere in the solar system. Bonus progress granted in onslaughts or defeat guardians while using submachine guns. Let me just say something about recluse, guys. I found it more difficult to progress recluse in onslaughts. Now, you can go kill guardians inside of Crucible. You can also load up into things like Grasp of Avarice or in my case, Shurichi. You can put on things like Osteostriga, Huckleberry, and within like four or five waves of Shurichi, that's it. Quest done. You can now start attunement for recluse and you get the curator role. Next, we have succession. We're defeating combatants with precision damage using sniper rivals anywhere in the system and bonus progress granted in onslaughts or defeat combatants in raids and dungeons using sniper rifles. This is 100. We have Fall of Guillotine. We're rapidly defeating combatants using swords anywhere in the system. You gain bonus progress in onslaught or defeat combatants using swords. Hung Jury. Defeat combatants with precision damage using scout rifles anywhere in the system. Bonus progress in onslaught or defeat combatants in the Vanguard Ops activities using scout rifles. Earning bonus progress in higher difficulty nightfalls. By the way, guys, I don't mean to flex. I know most people aren't that crazy about hung jury considering this is the fourth time we've gotten it but i blew my rng load with this one firefly and kinetic trimmers granted it's not exactly what i wanted to blow my rng load on but a curious combination of traits that will also exist on midnight coup whenever that weapon drops curious to see though how firefly and kinetic trimmers work and does it help with the proccing of kinetic trimmers then we have edge transit we're rapidly defeating combatants using heavy ammo grenade launchers anywhere in the system and bonus progress granted in onslaught or defeat combatants using heavy ammo grenade launchers. I will say for my folks that have the Gonro Hula Blue, this is a fantastic time to take advantage of it. Personally, I used a chain reaction edge transit, and we made pretty quick work of this, literally right there in Onslaught, which gives you bonus progress. I just found it a bit more difficult to achieve this with your primary base weapons. But again, if you are struggling, a Shurichi checkpoint or even Grasp, both of which are good for farming ads. But again, I still maintain that Shurichi is better than Grasp, although most people don't like to go put in a code at the wall. If you don't, feel free to come by our Discord. People do pass the checkpoints, or you can literally just join on the checkpoint bot, which I know was down yesterday, but hopefully it's up to date. Now, some future quests, though, to keep in mind. Pretty much all of these are in line with what we've already seen, but we got things like Hammerhead, Blast Furnace, the Mountaintop, Lunas Howl, Forbearance, and Midnight Coup. Now, the reason why we're bringing up all these is because, again, if you're looking to farm any of these weapons, you will need to do these quests to start doing attunements. Can you get a drop of these weapons before doing attunements? Absolutely. But these attunements help save you time by allowing you to focus on those drops. So I highly advise guys doing these quests before you start mega farming for a specific god roll. Now in terms of loot, what about these chests in the middle of this room? This is our armor. You see, once you level shacks up enough, you will gain access keys. And they're all separated based on your rank. For instance, rank 4 will unlock the class item chest. Rank 6 for the legs, rank 10 for the chest, rank 12 for the arms, and rank 14 for the head. Now, they're pretty good looking armor sets. Again, inspired from year 1 of Destiny 2. Now, you'll also need certain amounts of trophies of bravery to open these armor chests. Now, the rest of the reward track here with Shaxx will have Ingrams, trophies of bravery, an ascendant alloy, ascendant shards, and an exotic Ingram. And at the end, we have a key card called Super Black Key Alpha. This is one one of two key cards that are needed to unlock the super black shader, which is dead sexy. The second key card can be earned from our site, which requires you to complete all 12 brave weapon quests. So this is another reason why you want to do every one of these quests. Keep in mind, guys, after this point, two more of these quests will be unlocked every single week until April the 30th. So not as long as the original time gate, but yes, we do have a small time gate of three weeks. So guys, that's it. 
That is Onslaught. As far as builds go, we will be doing build battles on our channel. Feel free to come by. We're literally going to be doing build battles for Onslaught and have you guys come in and recommend your favorite builds for taking on this game mode, especially at Legend difficulty. I'm excited what you have to share with us. What I will say though, guys, be flexible in what you utilize when it comes to clearing out ads and just doing Onslaught in general. And when you do damage phases, swap things out, put on those surge mods, overcommit there in damage. And then afterwards, literally just swap right back to your same ad clearing build but do not forget that there are tormentors present throughout this activity and it seems to be random when they spawn like i have literally had them spawn on me at the very beginning of onslaught just completely random and fellas you need to be carrying things that can deal with dealing precision damage on tormentors hit those shoulders hit the chest and chew them down well fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right